Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this page from Botanicum um, by Maria Trolley. I hope you all have this picture in your version. I've actually got a special edition of Botanicum which apparently has extra pictures in it and I'm not sure whether um, this one has the same as you. I don't know. Anyway, we are going to start with the leaves of the tulips. We did the flowers um, yesterday. I'm going to come in a little bit closer because we don't need to see the whole of the page. Now tulip leaves tend to be quite dark. Um, I'm just having a look at what I've got. I think I'm going to go for the castle green to start with. It's not a colour I use much because I'm not particularly keen on it to be honest but I think it's just going to work if I can find it. There it is. Castle green um, and I'm just going to do these large leaves. I want the colour to look quite different to the leaves in front which are the um, bleeding hearts and so this will do that um, I'm going to put a darker colour on top after maybe not over all of it but some of it this is so blunt let's um, sharpen it a bit I did have a comment actually on one of my videos saying I don't know how you can colour with such blunt pencils now it's an interesting comment um, I don't think I usually let my pencils get that blunt but sometimes I did yesterday I was on the phone to my mum and I had to go upstairs because um, my son was um, live streaming and um, I took some pencils and a, a postcard book with me but I completely forgot there's a little stem in there looks so be careful um, that I needed a sharpener I mean really schoolboy error anyway <laughs> Sharp. How long have I been colouring? Since 2013. I forgot I needed a sharpener. Anyway, so I had to uh, basically I just pick colours based on whether they were sharp enough. <laughs> so not the best technique, but hey, it, it worked and uh, that was fine. But um, no, sometimes I don't feel I need such a sharp tip than other times. It depends what I'm colouring at the moment. Uh, you know it's just a sort of general colour I don't really want to press that hard and indent the paper and things like that at the minute so I'm quite happy with using this sort of slightly um, blunter pencil um, and actually now I've just turned the pencil and I found a sharp bit because um, the pencil doesn't wear evenly to a round sort of nub it you know they wear unevenly and if you twist it a little bit you can often find a little sharp bit and I'm sure you have seen me in videos if you've watched many I sort of twist my pencil every so often like that and that's because I'm finding a new sharp edge so uh, I am just hunting for that sharp edge I'm sure most of you do it and maybe without even realizing so uh, there's a lot of green isn't there the tulip leaves are always so pretty I think um, they're probably not really this colour but you know Ooh, little fiddly details here this is where you need the sharper pencil but so also another thing is if I sharpen a pencil in a video and it breaks and then I try again and it breaks I get a bit worried about sharpening if it keeps breaking it's really annoying if I'm night like, colouring for myself it's fine but on video for you to just keep watching me sharpening and breaking a pencil it's like I don't, you know and it slightly annoys me um and I don't want to be that annoyed person on video <laughs> it doesn't normally annoy me that much if it's an expensive pencil it can get a bit you know thinking about how much money you're sharpening away but um, I'm fortunate I have a lot of pencils and uh, I'm so I try not to think about that sort of thing too much you know you can drive yourself a bit mad and also it might stop you using pencils in the sense that if I thought well this pencil cost me x amount of money if I um, sharpen it I'm sharpening away x pence every inch or whatever you know it's not a healthy way to be buy your pencils use them enjoy them if they sit in a box they're not giving you value for money you know you're not enjoying them so uh, use them if you've paid money for them use them and uh, 
if you use them up and you can't afford to replace them, use up all your pencils, you know, buy a budget set. It's, so they won't be as good, but uh, you learn so much. I'm going to do these stems now. Learn so much from a budget set because you have to um, use them in a different way um, to get... I don't know where that stem goes. So uh, we'll have a look, at, like we did last time, we'll look at the bottom bit after and try and sort of calculate what's going on. It sounds like my husband's ready for a walk. I'm not. Oh well. Um, I will. Uh, I will just do these stems, and then I'll talk to him and uh, see what he says about it. So uh, it might be that he just wants to pop out and get milk. Um, now, this stem here looks to me like it's coming right up to these flowers here. This one's coming down here from behind so I think this one is a tulip stem I'm going to colour that one as a tulip stem this one hmm, could be that one seems to go up to there this one is definitely a tulip stem I am thinking that goes up there. I think that's that one. And this one. Is that that one? Is that that one? Yeah, I think... Hmm. I think I'll leave the others as they are. Um, just checking I've done. Yes. Now, Castle Green Deep is our next colour. If I can find it. Um... That it? No. Maybe it's down here. There it is. It needs a good sharpen. And what we're going to do is the sort of edges like we did with our other greenery. So here's our castle green deep. So we're going to go along the edge of the stems. Like this. And then just sort of fade it in a bit. Like we did last time. These are a bit thicker so I want to bring the colour a little bit further in. And again, I'm hoping it gives us that sort of slightly three-dimensional look. And the more layers you do, um, you know, of different sort of slightly different colours, the more it will show up. But keeping it fairly simple, I think it's just going to look bright and cheery. As I said yesterday, we're not going for sort of photorealism by any stretch of the imagination. Just a little bit of, you know, extra colour here and there. Fairly simple. Now the leaves, I'm thinking, will be darker in the middle. So I'm just going to layer up a bit of this darker colour in the centre. It's a bit fiddly all those other little plants in there like that so here just where it comes to the point in the center there just putting in a bit of extra color like that now where it overlaps I might want to try and put in a bit of sort of shadow there like there and we'll do a bit in the middle here as I say, it's a little bit fiddly. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You've still got quite a lot of white paper showing through at this point. So if it's easier for you, you could just do a layer of um, another layer of the same colour rather than fiddling around with this other colour. It's completely up to you. Or you could just leave it with one layer of colour. I know some people just do that and they're happy with the one, you know. It's, uh, as I say, it's up to you. Now I'm going to go for Castle Green Light and I'm just going to go over all of those leaves again because for me they're not quite solid enough. So our Castle Green Light and just to sort of tidy up and um, yeah, 
go over those bits that I've missed really. See the more layers you add the more likely you are to cover up areas that you may have either carelessly missed or accidentally missed. There we go. It's just a little quick extra layer. Now the blue flowers we're going to be doing next and while I'm doing this I'm thinking about the colour. Now because I've gone over them a little bit with green here and there I could carefully try to erase it um, or, which is my preference, choose a fairly deep blue colour that will just cover it over. Um, not When you look at flowers they're not all identical colours anyway so you don't need to worry too much about it being absolutely perfect and them all being the same and a bit of green with a bit of blue works anyway. So maybe I'm just being lazy. I'm just keeping it simple as well, but you know, it's a sort of makes it quicker and easier, which I'm all for to be honest. Oops, just <laughs> nodge my pencils by my finger. Um, right, there we go. So there's our leaves done. So this blue, I'm gonna, I quite like a sort of purpley blue. I'm having a look at what we've got and I'm thinking the cobalt blue deep will look really pretty even if it isn't quite the right shade. So I'm just going to try and find it. Uh, I found the cobalt blue. I found the cobalt blue light. There it is, cobalt blue deep. It's, it's a nice colour. I don't know if it's quite the right colour. But okay. Now with these flowers, they're small. I'm not going to be doing um, anything very fancy. I'm only going to do one layer of colour. So I'm going to layer it up near the middle and then try and lighten it a little bit towards the edge. Not too fussy, they're quite small. You can just block it in if you want, but I'm just layering up a little bit more near the centre. Now these flowers have a white, that little ring, can you see, around the black middle, that, that's white. So we don't have to colour that in at all, we can just leave it. And because the paper is cream, you might want to use a little bit of pen for that, white pen, um, to just brighten it a bit. I've just seen where I've missed a bit um, on my leaf. This is what happens as you come towards the end, you notice bits that you've missed. There we go. Um, now I'm not sure what colour leaves these have, but again we want to try and make the green look quite different to the other greens that we've used so that it stands out a little bit, it doesn't just all merge. I mean sometimes when I'm doing a picture I will keep all the greens the same so that there's some consistency through, especially if I've got lots and lots of different colour flowers. But here we haven't got a great deal of different colour flowers, there's only the three. So I think it's fine having a different colour green and I think a darker colour will be better because we've got um, we've gone over it a little bit in places so if we do it dark it will show up more. Um, I'm wondering about something like a hooker's green. Um, it's also quite thin, the, um, the, the stems so we're only probably going to be using one shade of green so we want it to be one that stands out if you know what I mean. I think I'm really liking this colour. Um, it's just a colour I, I like, um, generally like so uh, that's good. Happy with that. I'm just going to move through. We also need to think about our ribbon. What colour are we going to colour that? Now we're not restricted by flower colour like we were. Not that we were restricted, we could have just done the flowers any colour. We don't have to stick with the with the correct colour. We can do them any colour. Um, but the ribbon, I'm thinking what colour will match pink, blue and orange? What, what would you do? Have a little think. Um, I'm going to do, I think, a violet. I think... Um, it goes, obviously, and violet goes with blue and pink because it's made of blue and red. 
but also um, it's sort of on the opposite side of the colour wheel to orange so you get that sort of clash um, but we sort of say it makes it pop you know they work and that was quite far away from the orange right down here so uh, I think that will work um, and also Castle has got the most beautiful violety colours um, which so that's good that always um, influences me if you love your purples then Castle is definitely um, a set that you should consider because it's got the best range of purples um, in the soft touch set in the Castle Arts Gold set they don't have so many um, they d the gold I've got the 120 gold and the 120 soft touch and they're both they've got a different selection of colors I've actually done a comparison chart between the two because they've both got a um, I can't think actually um, they both got some colors that are the same called the same name but when you swatch them they don't look the same um, which is a little confusing I feel but if you've got your swatch chart in front of you then you can check um, for example the Terra Verde um, and Terra Verde Deep they're really different um, between the two sets so as I say I've done a comparison chart because I think it's really useful to know I've always wanted to know and um, so once I had the two sets um, Castle um, kindly sent me the gold set um, when they sent me their butterflies colouring book um, to show you and so um, I was able to produce the comparison chart they um, Castle actually I'm going to spread a rumour now said to me that they're bringing out some new pencils in the summer um, and they would send me some which was very kind of them and uh, I'm very curious because I'm thinking what I'm my guess is you heard it here first my guess is that they might be woodless um, colouring pencils because they've got some woodless watercolour pencils or it could be that they've got another set of watercolour pencils because I don't know if they've got 120 I've got 72 set of their watercolour pencils I don't know if they've got more or not there we go there's our blue I'm happy with that as it is I'm not going to do anything else with it but we need to do the stems and leaves um I'm looking at the hookers I think it's going to work um my hooker screen's quite there it is it's been sharpened with a dowel um so I've got to try and find all the stems I've got a very sharp edge here which I'm going to use I may need to resharpen it and I feel that if I do it quite dark so I'm layering it up I'm not going to do more than one layer and uh, it will just show up over the uh, they get a little bit thicker we might do another color on the stems maybe um, the these thicker bits of stem but not these tiny bits I was going to see if my son's messaged me. I've got my... Um, th there. No, he hasn't. That's fine. He's probably... What time is it? No, he's probably not quite at uni yet. Sometimes he forgets to tell me he's got there because he's seen a friend. He's nattering. So, um, it's fine. His um, exam isn't until 10 and it's not 9 yet. So, he's got ages. I think actually said the bus was late. So uh, there's that aspect too. So all these leaves I figure are part of this other plant. So I'm going to colour them in this colour. Um, I don't know if they are really because I'm pretty sure the leaves on this plant are quite small. Maybe these are bleeding hearts leaves. No, they don't look like. I'm, I'm just thinking bleeding hearts leaves aren't have um, aren't this shape. So. Uh, I'm just giving it a quick scribble and then I'm going to go along the centre 
And you see there's a little vein. I bring the colour out from there. I do the same on this side. Just so that we've got a little bit of contrast in how much colour is down on our leaf. There we go. And I'm going to do these stems while I'm down here. And because this is already quite dark, I'm just going to do those edges in the same pencil because um, I don't think I have a darker green, to be honest. Here, like that, and then this one. There. So basically, quite a rough layer here, and then around the edge, I'm just going to sharpen this, it's getting too blunt. All the way around the edge. Now I don't know what that line is there inside the bow. I think it's just supposed to be part of the fabric. Now got this leaf here. I'm thinking it'd be a bit darker underneath. Sounds like my family are getting ready to go out. Oh well, I can always go out. I've got to go to town actually. So I can do that after. There we go. And then got all sorts of little stems here. I think there and there and there maybe little bit confused as to what's going where to be honest just color the best I can I think one's the stem to the leaf and one's the stem to the flowers so just gotta get all these little bits in between don't mind too much about getting the colour on the blue because it won't show up but I want to make sure I don't get it on the white because that will show up. Now I'll try and do what I did with the leaf on the other one. Just tidying it up. There we go. Now our bow. Now I am going to use the purple lake deep which is very pretty and I'm going to go over the whole bow with this if you like purple you'll love this shade I should imagine although some people prefer a pinky purple I guess this is probably my favorite color in castle art pencils even though normally green's my favorite color this particular purple I just love it and then that bit in there. Sounds like my family have gone out. <laughs> I could have just waited five minutes, I'd have been done. Oh, well, I think the husband was desperate to get some milk because he had run out and couldn't have a coffee. So, anyway. There, so that's quite rough. But I'm going to use the mulberry just add a few details, just sharpen it. There it is, mulberry. And in here, I am going to come back in with some of the purple lake again because it's a little bit messy but it's quite nice to mark in these um, darker areas first so I 
how we'd have some sort of shadowy bits and here. Right, I'm going to sharpen the purple lake deep. Oh, I've got pins and needles in my foot. Here, purple lake deep. Now I'm going to continue from where I've done that mulberry and just bring that colour up to the top. I want to tidy it up but not put too much colour up there. And the same here, a little bit less down in that dip. Tidy it up. Way up to that and up to there like that. And then down this one a bit lighter on the top. And then this one I'm sort of gonna fade it down towards the bottom. But just I'm just colouring over the areas that look a little bit too white where I've missed bits and apparently going out of the lines. <laughs> there we go. Now, let's have a look. Now you could choose to get your white pen out at this stage and do some around the centres of these. I'm actually going to leave them. I quite I think they're fine as they are. I haven't gone over the lines that much, so I think it's okay. You could put white dots elsewhere as well, but I don't think it's necessary if we're trying to go for, um, to make them look a bit more realistic, they don't have white dots on. And when flowers are drawn in a little bit more of a cartoony style, I uh, tend to um, put the dots on. Anyway, I've just, um, my son's just messaged to say he's in uni, which is great. He's an hour early, which is lovely. Um, but that's me done. So as I say, I'm not going to do a background. I'm just going to leave it like that. So uh, there we are. So thank you very much for watching. Um, please do like, subscribe and comment and tune in tomorrow. I think it might be a planner tomorrow. I think if I put these in the order I think I'm going to. Anyway, but thank you for now. Have a super day and happy colouring. <laughs>